Hello, hello everyone. It feels like it's been forever since I filmed, um, and that's because it has been, because uh, I have been moving across the country. <laughs> uh, I have not filmed since I left Philly, or left Philly. What am I saying? My brain doesn't work today. Since I left Nashville and moved to Philly, um, I pre-filmed a bunch of stuff, so there's lots of content already ready to go, but this is my first time sitting down and filming in Philadelphia. Um, you'll notice it's not really my usual location. I haven't quite unpacked enough to set up my, like, full-time filming spot here, um, but... I'm getting ready for my partner's friend's birthday party tonight, so I thought I would sit down and do another- Oh, I'm putting this on the wrong way. Um, another, like, chatty, get ready with me type thing, because I really enjoyed the one like this that I already filmed, um, and it was a lot of fun. And so I thought it would be fun to sit down and do, and I miss- I don't know, like sitting down and hanging out and chatting. Um, also, one of my um, clients in Nashville brought me this like unicorn headband um, on like one of my last shifts and it's so cute. So of course I'm wearing it right now. I am officially in Philly and all settled in in my partner Carl's apartment and I'm like pretty well unpacked. I'd say that I'm like 80% unpacked. I've been here for exactly a week today um, and I've literally spent that whole whole entire time unpacking. But today I just kind of wanted to sit down and hang out and catch up because it's been a while since I filmed and it's been a while since I chatted with all of you um, and like just kind of talk about the start of my hiatus and and how things are going and all that good stuff. Now, for those who are not aware, um, I did move from Nashville to Philly and um, I am currently on hiatus from piercing. Every time I talk about I moved to Philly, everyone is always like, oh my god, are you piercing in Philly? Like, when can I see you? And yes, I will be piercing in Philly eventually. I'm not, like, planning anything just yet. I'm not, like, scheduling anything or picking any studios or anything yet. I really just want to enjoy my hiatus and, like, enjoy taking time for myself. And then after at least three months, if not maybe more, off, I'll start planning guest spots and traveling and announcing things once I know and once it's closer to working. I've been pretty transparent about this, but the whole reason for my hiatus is I just really needed some time away from working and piercing to heal and to work on myself and to work on some mental health stuff. And let me tell you what, it was such a hard decision to, like, decide to take this hiatus. I have known, like, I need, like, I was getting burnt out and needed time off and time to heal for a very long time. But, like, actually opting to take the time for myself, that was so hard to do. I was really worried about, like, disappointing people and disappointing customers and clients and, like, feeling like I'd failed people, um, or that people would be like angry with me or upset with me. I was also obviously really worried about the finances cause like I won't be working for three months. So like that was really scary. And like planning to not really have any income for that long was not easy and not easy to do. Although I would say hands down for me, the hardest part about deciding to take this hiatus was feeling, um, like a failure or like a disappointment, um, which I know is not the right way to feel. Cause like if I, if I had gotten into a car accident and broken my leg or broken my arm, if I had gotten sick with COVID, I would not feel like bad or guilty about taking the time off, you know? But in this situation, it wasn't my body that was broken or sick or needed help and time to heal. It was my brain. And even though I'm someone who struggled with mental illness and mental health their whole life, I think we still really stigmatize it. And it's still, even if we know better, it's really easy to look at ourselves as weak um, or failing if we need to take time for our mental health. Um, and I hate that. And I, I think we a lot of times feel that way about physical health too, but I think it's a much more prevalent mindset when it comes to mental health issues. Hey. This is Sushi. She likes to help. By help, I mean get in the way all the time. Hi. Are you being a problem? Are you getting in the way? Yeah. 
have oh yeah you hear that wind it's it's windy out there i know and like even knowing better i really struggled with that mentality when it came to my hiatus i felt like i don't know i felt like because it was a mental health thing it wasn't it wasn't like a real thing and like i know i know that i shouldn't feel that way and if literally anyone else in my life had come to me asking for advice about the situation i would have absolutely gone it's your mental health it's just as important you need to take time for yourself like i would have said all of those things but saying them to myself and believing it that's a lot harder but i am only a few days into my hiatus and I can already tell that this was the right choice, if I'm being completely and abundantly honest. I think sometimes you like just know, and this is one of those situations where I definitely just know. And like, I think a lot of people struggle with these mental health issues and with feeling guilty about needing time to work on them. We as a society have made it a very negative, taboo thing to prioritize your mental health like this. Unfortunately, most of my followers and friends and clients have been amazing, but of course there's always those people who aren't, um, and that makes it even harder. And I knew, I knew in taking this hiatus some people would be disappointed and some people would be upset, but it hasn't made it any easier to deal with, like, the negativity that I still get surrounding this choice. I had two separate people message me who were really upset that I hadn't published or finished certain projects yet. And there are two different posts for my blog. One is a series on aftercare and like healing piercings, but like a really in-depth one because there's lots of great aftercare information already available online on studio sites. I wanted to approach it a little more thoroughly. And the other was a guide for like different online retailers that you can purchase from that were safe. And both are, are blogs that I'm working on, but they're just in, project, in progress. There's like, I'm still doing some research. I'm still getting some links together. I, you know, they're just not finished yet. And the one person literally said, oh, well, you're on your hiatus now. Like, there's no excuse for this to not already be finished. And I was like, well, like, the whole point of my hiatus was to take a break and recover. And the other person told me that I was gatekeeping by not having it already done and already finished and post. And when I tried to give them an explanation about, like, why it was taking longer than anticipated and, like, all this extra work I was putting into it and, like, extra things I wanted to include, like, making it international and more inclusive for more folks and having more options on there for low-income folks um, and for people looking for things like plugs and other stuff, like, just a, a more inclusive list. And they were like, well, I think this should have come first. Um, and they, they just, you know, said, like, a bunch of really hurtful things about me not having these projects done. And at first, that did like really bother me and it did really get to me and there was a part of me that was like oh like maybe I should not start resting right away like maybe I should jump right in and like finish these up and get to work on these oh. miss you're not um you're not helping you're not <laughs> you're not my co-host today madam uh I'm gonna need you <laughs> to relocate, not directly in front of where I'm filming, please. And a really hard lesson, I think for anyone to learn, but especially for me and for a lot of other folks who work in anything that's like client-based or customer service-based, is that we very often feel beholden to our clients or if you're a content creator to your fans or whatever the case may be. And it's really hard to turn off and like enforce your boundaries and say that your peace and your mental health and your whatever it is comes first. And I sat with those messages of those people who wanted me to finish certain projects sooner or let them schedule with me sooner or who wanted me to do whatever it is they wanted me to do before I was ready. And I let myself feel disappointed for disappointing them and I let myself feel bad for not getting that done ahead of time and I let myself feel those feelings but then and this was really hard <laughs> don't take me saying this is me saying that this is this easy or anything this was hard um I let those feelings go and I reminded myself that and no matter what some people are always going to not approve of your choices and your decisions and some people are always going to judge you or think poorly of you and literally no matter what you do 
no one, not everyone is going to like you, not everyone is going to agree with the choices that you make. And I realize that this hiatus is going to make me make choices like that a lot because there are going to be a lot of people who don't like this or disapprove of this. There is a huge stigma surrounding mental health and mental illness and I've already received negative feedback from the industry for choosing to take time for my mental illness and I know that there are people out there who view it as weak. But frankly, I am realizing that people are going to think that no matter what. Like, I could work myself to death seven days a week, 12 hours a day the way I have in the past, constantly doing work, constantly producing content, constantly educating, and someone would still have an issue with what I do. People have still had issues with what I do, even when I do something 24-7. It's still never enough. It's still never what certain people want to see. It's still never what everyone agrees with. And thus far, being on this hiatus, even only for a week, has already taught me that if people are going to feel that way anyway, then I might as well protect my peace and live the life that I want to live, regardless of what that other people think about that or have to say about that or their judgment on that. There's that saying about having the confidence and the strength to be disliked, and I used to think I understood that saying when I was younger and, you know, starting to be more modified and... I was, you know, I was comfortable with being disliked for being modified and pierced and stuff, but I still really strove for all of my clients, all of my followers online, and all of my peers in the industry to like me or to see my work and things like that. And I stressed about that a lot. Um, and I really hated and really took it personally when, like, followers were upset with the content that I made or someone didn't agree with the way I did something. But I think more importantly, that quote applies to people who are a little bit closer to you and are in your industry or, you know, kind of in your circle or kind of orbiting around you. And it's not necessarily about doing things that make other people upset or angry and dislike you, but it's about having the courage and the confidence to do what is best for you and to live your authentic life and to enforce your boundaries, uh, even when that means that other people are going to dislike you. And quite frankly, if people can't see that and respect that and appreciate that, they probably weren't people who I wanted in my circle or in my life anyway. And those are the same type of people who make folks feel guilty or feel bad for prioritizing and taking time for their own mental health. Like, those are the type of people who do make disparaging comments about folks needing to enforce a boundary surrounding their mental health or take time. And there are the types of people whose voices we hear in our heads when we know we need to take time for ourselves and our mental health, but we feel too guilty or too afraid or too ashamed to. And if there's one thing I'm really hoping to work on with this hiatus and really hoping to get out of this hiatus, it's to learn not to listen to those voices and to listen to my voice and the voices of those in my life who love me exactly the way I am and who trust that I'm capable of making the best decisions for myself. Honestly, I think my hiatus is going to be really great for me in that regards. And while there's lots of other things to work on during this hiatus and there's lots of other things for me to improve on and work on and mental health stuff to work through, I really hope that my biggest takeaway these next couple of months is learning to listen to myself, to my body, to my brain, to my emotions, um, hold space for myself, show up for myself every day, and learn to put my own voice ahead of everyone else's. Because I think a big part of what has been my mental health struggles the last many years has been putting every other voice ever in front of my own. And it's okay not to do that. And it's not selfish to put yourself first. And it's not self-centered and it's not egotistical, and I think a lot of us could really benefit from prioritizing ourselves and our needs and our own voices, as opposed to always choosing everyone else around us first. So, I'm really enjoying doing these little chatty get ready with me's, and I think they're really fun, and I don't frankly care if not a lot of people watch them or not a lot of people like them, um, I'm gonna keep making them. And I'm still going to keep doing my super informative content as well. Um, I have some very exciting things planned as soon as I get my filming in. Maybe if y'all want, I'll take you on some adventures around Philly with me and we can hang out and chat a bit more. So, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today. <laughs> Oh, 
Why are you kissing? 